Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to our Saturday morning briefing. This morning, we don't have a lot to share, but we want, do want to take a couple minutes. Uh, today, it's going to be myself and Lynn McClintock. Um, but this morning, I wanted to give you an update about our Westminster Canterbury patient who, as you know, tested positive for COVID-19. And as you all know, he was cared for at VCU Health. And I'm very pleased to share with you that he has improved enough that he's returned to our campus and is being cared for now in our Parsons Health Center. Uh, this is fabulous news. We couldn't be happier. He remains in isolation, and our staff are being diligent about adhering to the infection prevention procedures and precautions. Um, he definitely has a long road to recovery, but he's getting stronger, and his condition is very, very hopeful. Um, I was uh, uh, really pleased that I had the opportunity to visit with him, spend about 10 minutes um, really getting to know him and spending a few minutes uh, with him in his room, and um, it was just great. It was a real highlight to be able to see him uh, back here and on the road to recovery. I know he's uh, getting therapy and getting nursing and, 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 and on, his ro on the road to, to wellness, but it's gonna be a long road. And so please keep him in your prayers and uh, keep supporting uh, him and, and the community because uh, like I said, he has a long road to go. Um, as you know, yesterday we had Dr. Uh, Danny Avula from the uh, Richmond and Henrico Public Health Department here, uh, and he spoke to you at yesterday's briefing. Afterward, uh, myself and our nursing clinical leadership was able to spend a few minutes with him to discuss our strategy, our planning, and, and the next few weeks uh, as it relates to how we continue to um, be vigilant and practice the right uh, prevention strategies and, and how best to keep this community safe. Um, as he did on the broadcast with you yesterday, he just repeatedly uh, stressed the vigilance of social distancing, uh, uh, repeated and, and, and vigorous hand washing, staying inside the campus, and, um, and keeping yourselves um, emotionally, spiritually, and, and physically well. Uh, and so I just want to reiterate what he said, which is, you know, we, we're doing our best to keep this community um, safe and, and well. And, and it's really, at this point, the hard work is yours, and that is to keep doing what you're doing. And, and we get lots of people thanking us all day long for all we're doing, and, and we're grateful for that. Um, but we want to express to you our thanks for um, doing what you need to do, which is... Um, maintain um, those, those social distancing and, 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 and uh, self-quarantine practices, because that's, what, that's what's going to win this in the long run uh, for this community and the broader uh, society. So um, thank you very much. He also expressed um, strongly to us that we need to be prepared, the staff that is, that the situation outside the gates uh, of Westminster is going to get worse before it gets better. And you heard him say that a little bit in, the, in his speech yes, or his talk yesterday about the acceleration of this. And so we're, you know, we need to, as a staff and as an organization, we need to stay diligent um, to staying in self quarantine at home and social distancing at home with our families, um, staying home because we got to stay well to keep coming to work. And so um, his message to you was very similar to the message he had for me and our staff, which is we got to do the same thing you do in order to stay well. Um, la another thing I wanted to mention is you should have received um, a memo from our resident physicians um, in your mailboxes yesterday. If you haven't picked it up, you'll find it in your mail today. And uh, this effort was led um, by doctors Sam Fuller, uh, and Don Switz, Bob Scott, and Clarence Thomas. Uh, they, they essentially wrote and, and drafted the letter and then solicited uh, support from really all of our physicians, uh, or most all of our physicians that live here, um, as well as our staff physicians, Dr. Felty, Reed, and Cook, and 
our board physicians, which we have a number of, I think we have four uh, physicians, two on our corporate board and two on our foundation board. And so I hope you have a chance to read that and, and just realize that um, they, um, we, I had received a number of uh, letters and emails and, and comments from that physician group saying that they supported the, the push to, to do these, these social distancing behaviors. And so um, I appreciate that gesture and that effort is very kind. And then lastly, um, please continue what you're doing. It's very helpful. Um, that is the greatest thing we could ask of you, staying in your apartments and keeping your distance. Continue to watch movies, read books, explore all the digital tours and other things on the Touchtown app. Connect with your friends, your loved ones by phone, Skype, FaceTime. Um, this is what's going to keep us healthy and safe and keep, and, and ultimately for all the rest of us who live outside the gates, we have to do the same things because that's the only way uh, Richmond is going to get to the other side of this uh, episode in our lives. Um, so thank you for all that. And, and it is really a hopeful story. I think if we keep doing what we're doing, we're all, uh, we're doing the right things and we're headed in the right direction. And I know it's a change, it's a change for all of us, but um, but we're, we're, we're doing well, and everybody feels good about it. So thank you. One last reminder, no briefing tomorrow. Uh, we're going to take the day off. And then our next briefing will be at 3 p.m. on Monday, and we're going to do just 3, 3 o'clock all next week. No, no morning briefings unless things change, uh, and we need to reinstitute that. But we hope not to. So thank you. Have a good weekend. I'm going to step away. I'm going to invite Lynn McClintock to come up and offer some scripture and a prayer. And uh, I'll see you on Monday. Thank you, John. I'm Lynn McClintock, Director of Pastoral Care. We care about you in your daily lives and keeping your spirits alive. And so the Pastoral Care Department has created a daily prayers booklet that we offer to you. It has a week's worth of prayers and reflections and, uh, and uh, scripture readings. It will recycle through each week. So um, we're going to do this every few weeks, but this is the new one. And if you would like to receive a copy, please call Vanessa Perry at 1502, Vanessa at 1502, or David Curtis at 5179, and we will deliver these to you. We hope that it will be helpful in helping you maintain a rhythm um, of your worship and devotion life. Today's scripture underlines something that we can all relate to right now. Particularly when we watch the news, we're seeing what is being taken away, how things are changing. Um, it's a lament of the things that are a normal part of our lives that are now missing. So listen to the scripture, but listen to what it says at the end. This is Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will be joyful in God my Savior. So you see that the scripture doesn't stop, but the scripture says to rejoice and to be joyful. When we meditate and think on these higher things, we will be lifted up and we will find joy. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, it is so easy to feel our losses right now because they are so pervasive and so sudden. Help us to trust that you can give us joy in the midst of struggle and peace in the midst of disruption. 
We have what we need already in us through your spirit. So when we feel like we need something, remind us that we need you and that you are here. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a blessed Saturday, and we'll see you Monday at 3 o'clock.